Hi, ghosties. I'm Macy. And I'm Natalie. And we are back from our week-long break. Woo! With new hairdos. Yes, yes. We both got our hair done. I chopped my hair off completely. And I'm trying to grow mine back from my big chop. So. Oh, looks good. Thanks. We're in two different areas in our life now. Yes. We're switching places. Yes. That's fine with me. Very strange. I also crocheted the best thing I've ever crocheted in my insert photo off. here she did a great job and i want one it is like the first thing that doesn't look like it's going to instantly fall apart if you pick it up so i think it looks cute i'm really excited about it yep. <laughs> it's a little book sleeve and i started watching dexter okay <laughs> <laughs> i haven't done anything exciting well it was a good little break but honestly i'm really excited to get back into this i've been itching for some ghost stories <laughs> no you're scared yeah okay well but i'm excited so the topic this week Started out as something suggested by a listener and a very good friend of mine, Chelsea. So Woo! shout out, Chelsea. Thank you. Woo! She suggested we look into the Baker Hotel in Mineral Wells, Texas. It's a once abandoned monstrosity of a building for such a small town, and it seems to have a ton of ghost stories surrounding it. But I didn't stop there. Mineral Wells actually seems to have several haunted locations in the area. And I decided that I can't talk about Mineral Wells without also talking about one of the most well-known haunted locations that is actually just a stone's throw away from the hotel. We're going to take a quick look at the Haunted Hill House as well. There's a show called The Haunting of Hill House. Yeah. That's different. It's mm. that, that show is based on a, a book, I think, by Shirley Jackson or a short story. Mm. So totally Never seen different. it. But I, I did think, hmm, interesting. You've never seen it? No, and I know I need to. Everybody's okay. told me. Yeah, You don't good. have to tell me. It's real good. I know. And I will watch it eventually. As I will watch Hereditary. <laughs> Oh, we don't have to get into it. No. <laughs> this place seems to be teeming with spirits and is open for investigations if anyone is near. So if you're interested. Interesting. Our tea this week is a repeat. And for Natalie's sake, we went with Earl Grey from Bigelow. Woo. 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 It's my favorite. Let's go. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. I love it. I drink this almost every day. I know. If I woke up early enough, I would drink tea every day, but I usually wake up in a panic and have to literally run out the door with like a piece of bread in my mouth and like a TV show. I'm always okay. like, oh. They have a decaffeinated too, a decaffeinated version. So you could have one like an evening tea. Mm. I could do some. But Bigelow tea is always a, a hit. A hit. Yeah. Well, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Overwhelmingly, yes most of the time. So before we dive into this 20s dream luxury hotel turned nightmare and the demon infested house nearby, I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about the home of the crazy. Okay. In 1877, James Alvis Lynch and his family left Denison, Texas with their 50 head of livestock and traveled west. They were headed for a drier climate in an attempt to escape the malaria that had spread in the area. Oh. They traveled southwest and ended up a little over 100 miles away from where they started their travels, but stopped here because of the dangers they had heard they'd encounter if they continued on. And it's here, just 50 miles west of Fort Worth, where Mineral Wells got its start. The Lynch family ended up on a beautiful piece of land in the hills, but they soon realized that the closest water source was miles away at the Brazos River. So in 1880, they drilled a well on their property. What they hadn't known was that their water would be rich in minerals, Ooh. hence the name Mineral, Mineral Wells. wells. <laughs> the Lynches noticed that the water had a stranger taste than what they were used to. But when the water seemed to be good enough for their animals, they took a chance and thought it was good enough for them. After drinking from the well for a few weeks, they began to feel better overall. Both James and his wife suffered from rheumatism, but the water helped ease the pain that they had suffered with for so long. That's really cool. So we're like, this is magic. Wow. When word began to spread of the family's magical healing water, people flocked to the town to see if their ailments could be cured as well. The official town of Mineral Wells was formed in 1881, its popularity only growing and more wells being drilled to ease the demand for the healing powers. The story of the crazy water is my personal favorite as it pertains to the history of this town. It just, it stuck with me. The crazy water? The crazy water. There was an old woman living in mineral wells that seemed to be suffering significantly from some kind of mental health problem. The people in town called her crazy. Just, she was just the crazy old lady that lived there. Mm -hmm. But after drinking from one of the wells full of mineral water twice a day for a little over a week, she began to interact with the other townspeople with more clarity, her mental state seeming to have gone back to kind of baseline. Wow. The wells in Mineral Wells, Texas, contain a high concentration of lithium that is used in some mood stabilizing medications today. So nice. They didn't know that that had helped with things like that. And she she was kind of cured. That's sad. I feel bad for her. That she was a crazy lady? Yeah. I know. Well, good for her. That she. she she made it. Nice. <laughs> this story only furthered the notoriety of the town where celebrities and high-powered people came from all over the world to get their hands on the special water. It's kind of like in Alton. 
Mm-hmm. They had that mineral uh, pool and stuff yeah. at the bottom of that hotel. But this town was just full of it. That's pretty cool. Bathhouses, drinking pavilions, spas, and other luxuries were open to accommodate the growing tourist industry. And just like in Alton, the people of Mineral Wells began to bottle their crazy water as well. Mm. And they'd ship it via train to all parts of the states. It's all capitalism. Yeah. It's well, always. They got to get their bag. <laughs> I mean, tr- sure. And they thought they were helping people too. Like okay. They, they truly thought that their water had magical healing properties. I mean, I mean it kind of did. Yeah. yeah. It helped ease pains and sufferings of other people. And in the 1800s, I would believe it. Oh, yeah. I'd believe it I'd now, believe it actually. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Business was booming, tourism was thriving, and opportunities were abundant. Enter wealthy entrepreneur T.B. Baker and his idea to build an international luxury resort hotel in 1926. Construction began on the large hotel, costing $1.2 million to bring a high-end spot for all the wealthy patrons of Mineral Wells. Is that in today's money? That is in then <gasps> Oh, wow. I didn't actually look that up. Let me let me do that. Yeah, please do, because I have to know. That is $21,300,000 in today's money. That is sickening. It had 460 rooms, two large suites, two complete spas, an outdoor Olympic-sized pool, and the cloud room. This was a room at the top of the hotel that was like a ballroom surrounded by large window, uh, like window full walls overlooking the city. It had a stage for a band and lots of room for dancing, socializing, Cute. eating, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. The Baker Hotel was completed and opened in 1929, just two weeks after the great stock market tr- crash <gasps> and right before the Great Depression. So a little unfortunate on the timing. A little. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Despite the fall of the popularity of mineral water at the time due to advances in medicine, FDA crackdowns, and many people losing the extra cra- cash to afford such luxuries, the Baker Hotel actually thrived. Oh. So they... I mean, I'm sure it would have been much greater Mm -hmm. had the Great Depression not began, but they still did really well. I also thought it was worth mentioning here real quick that one of the wells is still open and operational today, selling crazy mineral water of mineral wells. They still sell it. Can you buy it? Like, they'll ship it to you? Uh, Probably. I would like to get some. Yes, me too. But Uh, I'm very interested. I am too. What if it just cures me? I don't know what I have, but what if I just get cured? What if, what if I lose my sparkle? Like the fog just lifts. What if I just lose my sparkle and I just become normal? Hi, how are you? <laughs> you never know. Well, I'm interested that a, to try. Is that a risk you're willing to take? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then we're getting some crazy water. It was a place to be for celebrities like Clark Gable and Judy Garland, musicians, political leaders like President Ronald Reagan once stayed there, and supposedly even Bonnie and Clyde. Ooh. There's no proof that they were actually there, but um, one of the waiters there claimed that he saw Bonnie, like Bonnie handed him a, like a $20 bill for a tip. And oh, he was like, oh, I'm pretty sure that was, that was Bonnie. Okay. I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to believe it. I always say I'd like, to, I'm just going to take it as fact. Anytime I see anything about Bonnie and Clyde, I'm like, yeah, probably. Yeah. Just whatever it is. I love the lore. I don't even know all of it, but I also think of the pencil pushers on Fairly Odd Parents as well. I don't know who that is. Bonnie, Whenever, why do you think of Bonnie and Clyde? Are they n- named Bonnie and Clyde? No, they are like, is it the pencil pushers? I don't know what their name was, but on Fairly Odd Parents, it's like Timmy and his family go to Niagara Falls, and then it's like the two pencil bandit people that look just like his parents. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. When I think of Bonnie and Clyde, those images flash into my head, and that it's is hilarious. plagued me for my life. Yeah. I'll have to show you a real picture of Bonnie and Clyde. I know what they, <laughs> I've seen real photos, but that just pops into my brain since I was little. That's hilarious. Yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> like that i hate it (laughs) well it was in its prime from 1932 to the 50s keeping the town of mineral wells alive and well the beginning of the end for the baker hotel was in 1952 when tb baker retired and left the hotel to his nephew earl baker why does that name sound familiar i don't know i mean these people were hotel magnates they were just big rich people in the south okay i don't know that earl baker that sounds familiar i'm sure there were many earl bakers probably maybe you know an earl baker i don't know i don't know i don't know many earls but (laughs) i can't say i do either (laughs) he operated the hotel until 1963 when it closed for the first time people just weren't as drawn to the town any longer and it opened again in 1965 but finally closed in 1972 it remained abandoned merely a shell with glimpses of its ornate past for locals and travelers to see and for some to illegally trespass and explore it is you'll see videos um just type in uh, the Baker Hotel and just video after video of people just exploring. exploring. Yeah. Urban explorers. I like, I love those videos when they go into places. Only the respectful ones. Oh yeah. No, like when they go into schools that go and, in and stuff. Just, like wreck things. Yeah, no. It is currently being renovated and set to open up again in the spring of 2026. So we have soon. to go. We do. Really Add cool. it to our list. We've got a long list of places to go. Yeah. One thing that hundreds of people since 1972 and even before have had to reckon with, including the new construction crew, 
are all of the guests that have never left the Grand Hotel. Oh no. It's haunted, man. There are ghost tours of the building, though most of them remain outside now because of the trespassing and all that, mm-hmm. to discuss the countless numbers of spirits roaming the deserted halls of the Baker Hotel. The restoration project manager for the hotel claims that he has heard of 29 reported deaths inside the hotel through its decades of operation. And there have been rumors of accidents, murders, suicides, deaths by illness of those who had come to Mineral Wells seeking the healing properties of the Mm -hmm. water. Some of these are confirmed, like a murder in the lobby in the (gasps) 1940s. My God. But it's hard to find many pieces of actual documentation to back up these claims. So it's mostly legend and rumor Mm -hmm. kind of behind these. As they mostly are. Mostly are, yeah. But we've talked about places like hotels, be it operational or abandoned, being a hotspot for paranormal activity regardless. Yeah. It's just a place that many people come from all over the world and have sometimes life-changing experiences yeah oh that makes me so sick and just the residual hauntings in a hotel and in a place that's visited like that so often when you go to a hotel like walking down the hall like aren't you always scared there's always an eerie kind of feeling in the back of my mind just feels like and i've never been able to tell like if it's if i'm afraid of people or if it's just like the heavy feeling of like the energy no no i get I I i get that like prickling heavy feeling in basically every hotel I've ever yes, been Yes, yes. No matter how new or clean or anything. I'm always like looking over my shoulder. Yeah, me too. I That's know, weird. I thought I was just me. I thought no. I was just a weirdo. I thought I was just paranoid, but yeah, no. No. Okay. Wow. Good to know we're not alone. I Comment hope we're not alone. <laughs> if we are just the weirdos. We might be, but it has always been something that's freaked me out. There are plenty of legends in the Baker Hotel. Paranormal activity has been reported through all parts of the building. It seems that there are a number of residual hauntings experienced throughout just literally everywhere Mm -hmm. people have reported smelling various scents in different rooms like the smell of laundry detergent in the laundry room wafting by briefly though the laundry room hasn't been in operation since the 50s oh i was about to say well duh yeah no so like people will be walking through the laundry room and then suddenly get a like a a scent of laundry detergent pass by them and then it's gone and they can't find any source there's no laundry detergent lying around or anything like that i just had a weird thought and Mm. this is way off from what i normally think i like these thoughts what if it's like a different um like timeline oh yeah and they're like crossing through or like a different i don't know what you would call it like dimension yeah or whatever like overlapping kind of thing and so like it's currently being used but not in our timeline or our dimension but they walk in there at the right time at the right place and they like i think that all the time like almost every time we do an episode and things like this um come up I think about that. Like, I what can't. if it's just overlapping timelines or, or dimensions or something, and we're just residual hauntings are actually just people that just are just actual there. people, just a like a curtain away from us. But I can't think about that. I know that's why I don't ever bring it up because you're always like fall into a pit of despair when I talk about it. It's, I don't know why I can't think about it or talk about it. I just can't. My brain literally just like it Shuts powers down. down it goes dark i can't and i don't know why it's overwhelming to think about just the infinite possibility yeah what's that guy's name neil something neil degrasse tyson yes he listening has- to him talk makes me feel comforted but also like in a horrible panic i listen to his podcast star talk with with my kids often like when we go for walks or, or ride around in the car we listen to star talk because he's an interesting guy he's an interesting guy and i believe that he's very smart and good at you know whatever it is he does listening to him comforts me but also scares me so bad i don't know why well maybe if you opened yourself up to it a little more and listened a little more you would be less scared i just like you know, to like stay exposure here exposure therapy i just want to stay here i'm you know In your little bubble i'm grounded okay. I'm, <laughs> i'd like to remain so okay Okay. Something often experienced inside the building are the sounds of footsteps walking through the hallways in the lobby. So again, kind of like that residual haunting, Mm -hmm. maybe. The last manager of the hotel had stayed late one night to get some work done when he heard the sounds of a woman's high heels in the lobby floor. He thought it could have been his assistant manager, but when he yelled out her name, there was no answer. The sounds of the footsteps faded out, and when he went to look for the person making the noises, he realized nobody was there but him. His assistant manager hadn't even been in the building in at any point that day that's one of those moments where your whole stomach falls out and you're just like <gasps> you know what i mean yeah that's you're like, moments where i tell myself well time to leave yeah i would have to run <sighs> that's scary i don't like that at all that same manager was inspecting the fuse box one winter evening because the breaker was tripping every single night like they had a bunch of christmas decorations up mm-hmm. and he thought maybe something was wrong wrong with the wiring or maybe overloading the circuit while looking over everything he couldn't find the source to the issue that he was having but He heard the sounds of hurried footsteps approaching from behind him. He turned around, but once again, nobody was there. 
He knew all of the hauntings and spoke out into the empty room that he meant no harm to the spirits and that he was only doing his job to take care of the building. Nice. He never had any trouble with the lights again after that. Good. Okay. Okay. That's comforting. So they're kind of like, they're just watching. That's just their making building. sure that you're taking care of their, their oasis in their afterlife. You know? Yeah. So I was thinking... What if to the spirit, I mean, we see an abandoned building. Mm -hmm. What if to them, they see it how As it they was. saw it when they were there? <gasps> oh. So you know how sometimes spirits will, will manifest themselves into whatever a point, I don't know, they felt the happiest mm -hmm. or whatever in their life. So yeah. if they die old, maybe they come back as a young man mm -hmm. in, in their spirit form as a ghost mm -hmm. or whatever. What if they are also seeing their surroundings as it was in their heyday, in the time yeah. that they remember oh, it? I like to believe that. Me that too. sounds nice. That's how I picture the spirit realm. Really? It's just kind of like rose-colored glasses overlay on everything. I've never thought about it from their perspective. Maybe, I don't know how. Not for tormented ghosts. Not no, ghost suffering, just but someone, like the happy ones that are coming back to like like a hotel like this where they spent good times in their I've life. I never, I don't know why this is like blowing my mind. I never thought about like from their perspective what they're seeing. I think about it all the time. That's unlocked a new level for me. <laughs> Glad. Yeah. I read one interview with a local medium who claimed to sense the spirits of many people in and around the building. She claimed that not all of them had passed while in the hotel, but remained to that spot in the afterlife because it held a great significance in their lives. So like these kind of people, mm -hmm. like are they seeing when they visited in the 40s or are they seeing the old decrepit? <laughs> I think they're seeing it how it was. I, I think so too. Otherwise, why return? Yeah. She claimed that they don't want to be bothered and could be anyone from former guests of the hotel to employees that worked inside for years. Oh, I would never go back to work. I mean, if I really enjoyed my job, like if it was a big part of my life and, and where I had most of my connections and actually had a good time in life. Then okay. Yeah. I'm not there yet with work, but I maybe have one never day. had a job that way, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day. I'm hoping. <laughs> There have been several paranormal investigations, including those accompanied by psychic mediums who have captured video and photographs of orbs and mists all throughout the old hotel. Could it be dust and bugs? Could it be an actual spirit? Who knows? But in a place like this, an abandoned building of sorts, dust is kind of there, yeah. present. That I always kind of like take with a grain of salt. Me too, but unless I see the photo and it's like, whoa, you yeah. know? Same. Some of the spirits sensed by psychic mediums were reported by psychics coming in on other unrelated investigations without having known the information given by the previous sensitive mm. person. So they'll come in and be like, I sense a woman on this floor and she's very flirtatious or something. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that two nights ago in another investigation, a different medium had said that said the exact same thing. I like that. Those That's proof to me. Those. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. credence to those claims. One psychic medium even reported sensing and experiencing 49 different spirits in the building. Whoa. I mean, it's a big building, but 49? still, that's a lot of, that's a lot of ghosts. Yeah. I thought you said like 20 something was like the, 29 was like the known deaths in the building, right? The reported okay. supposed deaths. Okay. But again, like one of them said, it, come not back. all of them had died in, yeah. in the hotel. They're just people who liked it. I guess. Okay. One of the most notorious hauntings inside the hotel is believed to be one of the previous owners, either Earl Baker or maybe even T.D. Baker. It's unclear. Okay. Legend says that he passed away in his suite in the hotel, but newspaper records show that, and this is Earl Baker, I believe, he actually passed in a different haunted location in the city, actually, the Nazareth Hospital, which is also, I think, is abandoned, too, oh. to this day. Regardless, Mr. Baker spent a lot of time at the hotel, either one, and in mineral wells in general, and him returning in the afterlife makes sense to me. Yeah, I was about to say, even if he didn't pass there. He owned many hotels in Texas, too, but mm. this one was kind of a... His, his, his one. Yeah. Okay. He's often seen on the 11th floor Floor where his suite was located many years ago. People often smell the scent of cigars when they enter that portion of the old hotel and hear him pacing back and forth, back and forth mm. across the room. It was customary for ghost tours to knock on the door before they enter the room out of respect for the ghost of Mr. Baker because he's kind of like, I mean, he was a powerful guy yeah. in, the, in his life, so he still kind of has that importance about him in the afterlife. And I just think respect. Yeah, like that's their room. Yeah. Might as well. Many people who have toured the hotel have claimed to have small items from their pockets or purses go missing during the tour, only to be found in the Baker suite hours later by tour guides. The tour guides will take them through the hotel and they'll get to the end and like, oh, my ID's missing or uh -huh. my house key's missing. And the tour guide will go back through just checking that everything's locked up and secured and everything and find the items in on the 11th floor. They're always there. That's scary. But imagine the um, tour guides are just pickpocketing people. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> just taking your things. It's possible. That's hilarious. No, I don't want to disparage the good people of Mineral Wells. But okay. Well, never <laughs> mind. It is a ghost. 
Another haunting that is almost as active as Mr. Baker himself is believed to be his mistress on the seventh floor. Legend claims that Baker kept his secret affair partner in the hotel in several rooms on the seventh floor. So she had kind of a little suite. But the stress of the secrets and knowing that she could never be with him out in the open got to her and she jumped to her (gasps) death sometime in the 40s or 50s. This is legend. Oh, I don't like that one. Rumors of his mistress living in the hotel seem to have been started by staff who believed the woman staying at the hotel for free and often seen being given money mm-hmm. by Mr. Baker must be nefarious. But there are some reports that Myla Baker, which was T.D. Baker's sister, often lived in the hotels that her family owned and mm. her time in Mineral Wells was spent on the seventh floor until her death in the 50s. Oh. So is that just a rumor started by staff and just kind of Probably. evolved over time because there's a haunting there? Or I'd like but- to believe it was the sister. I don't want something terrible yeah Yeah. and also that to me just like knowing human nature and how people talk and gossip that makes more sense like that'd be like oh she doesn't pay for her room da 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 and the whole time they just don't know that's the sister no i agree i agree that seems more human like to me just kind of whispers by the staff yeah she's always there he's Uh, always going in her room mm -hmm. i've seen her give her money like that yeah and you're bored at work so you want something to talk about yeah i could see that whether or not the story of the mistress and her horrific end are true reports of the apparition of a fiery red-haired green-eyed woman on the seventh floor have been rampant since the late 50s or early 60s a porter who worked at the hotel claimed to have encountered the ghost while working a shift late into the night he came out of the room after dropping luggage for a guest and could see her down the hall she suddenly disappeared from sight with nowhere to have disappeared to And some people still claim to see her today. More often than being seen, though, she makes her presence known by the scent of her perfume. A great many people will claim to smell an older lavender perfume scent, like something you'd smell like your grandma wearing. Oh, yeah. On the seventh floor, including the managers of the restoration of the hotel lobby, who had heard footsteps and stuff like that. That's crazy to think about. She wore that, like, in her youth because that's what was popular, but now it's like a grandma perfume. I think about that kind of thing all the time, like styles and... and things that trends and stuff the yeah. things that we think are so young and hip and cool will just be old people They're things like pack it up like grandma. 50 years that's already happening though with like skinny jeans and things oh, don't get me started all the kids are like ew skinny jeans and that was only like 10 years ago mm-hmm. boo it's pretty crazy whenever i talk to the upsetting. intern at my job and she's only like five years younger than me i feel like a grandma i think the advent of the internet has done that like trends just come and go so fast that yeah. something that was popular two years ago is like, oh my God, you still do that? It's like, I don't even I know what year it. it is most of the Me time. Me neither. <laughs> I just do what I like. Agreed. Well, the scent of this perfume is so strong. It's as if it had just been sprayed. So it's mm. not like a like a, a soft light. smell that's you smell on someone who passes by you. It's like a, she just spritz the room and walk through it kind that's of thing. Cool. There is no known source for that particular smell in the building either. Mm-hmm. So they don't have like a glade plug-in there's there's no glade plug-in there's no incense of lavender or anything like that the mistress is also believed to be the spirit that can be heard walking in heels in other parts of the hotel she doesn't stay confined to her suite and walks all over the building especially the first floor lobby she is sometimes blamed for poking and touching some of the male tourists who walk through the haunted hotel and will sometimes become a little more aggressive or forceful around females who walk into her suite on the seventh floor. So oh. she's kind of territorial. Yeah. Very strange stuff. Something like that. And I think that story makes a little more sense if it wasn't the mistress. Like if it was mm-hmm. just some like single old lady and she's like, ooh, young, cute man, yeah. you know, rather yeah. than a mistress because I don't know. I feel like the mistress would just be interested in, in her man. Her man. Yeah. Who, Trying to go up to the 11th floor all the time. Yeah, I can see that. (laughs) Another tragic legend set inside the Baker Hotel is that of the cook and the maid. The story goes that one of the maids and a cook working in the hotel were having an affair together. One evening, the maid told the cook that she was going to admit to their relationship to his wife. The cook was enraged by this and stabbed her to death (gasps) in the pantry of the kitchen. Very tragic. Is this confirmed? No. Oh, good. This is yet another story without proof to back it up. But that doesn't mean the encounters in the kitchen that people have reported over the years aren't true. Women who visit the Baker Hotel and walk through the kitchen will often report hearing the whispers of a scared female voice telling them to leave as they enter. As if it's a warning to those visiting to not befall the same fate that she had. I don't like that. I really no. hope that one's not true. There's all no these. proof. There's there's no documentation of a murder in the kitchens. Okay. Doesn't mean it's not there. True. But to ease our hearts and souls. <sighs> yeah. I just hate when that. you tell me like a really tragic story and be like, and she's still there today. It's like, oh. I know. I feel like a lot of these hauntings or a lot of hauntings in general, not just these people have to make up some kind of tragic backstory. Because yeah. Because to, to a lot of people, like if you pass away 
then you just move on. You just you go. Know? Yeah. And there's no reason for you to stick here unless you had some kind of tragic end. That's true. That's true. People, I feel like the vast majority feel that way. Yes. Like you have unfinished business or it's like, no, she's just hanging out. She I just like there is the some hotel. tragedy. I believe that there are some people just like, I don't know, chilling for some reason or another. Mm -hmm. But I also very much believe that a lot of these are just residual energies. Yeah. Another spooky sequence of events that occurs at the Baker Hotel was first reported on in the 90s. A local bank teller would often look up from her window and stare at the massive site that is the Baker while she worked the drive through window in the early morning. One morning before they opened when she was setting up, she took note that many of the windows on the several floors were open. She was just like, oh, wow, some of those windows are open. Nothing weird. Nothing strange about it. Okay. Just hours later, when she took another peek up at the hotel, all of those windows were closed. She didn't think much of it, thinking maybe someone had gone in, closed them for some reason or another. Okay. Went about her day. Okay. The following day, having taken notice of the windows now, she started watching them. She saw that many windows were open again that morning, and she pointed this out to some of her coworkers, and they began to take an interest in the windows as well. Watching throughout the day and noting to each other when windows had opened or closed. And it was always random. Mm -hmm. Even when they knew tours were not happening, they didn't see anybody go in. The window orientations were changed just throughout the day, randomly, open and Weird. closed. And it was all different hotels or, or all different windows, all different floors. Just, just random. random. Yeah. They knew the building had not been occupied since the 70s. And it did make sense that someone would be going through and opening and closing random windows throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Like who has the time? Yeah. There was no pattern and seemingly no reason for the windows to be open and closed as often as they were. And no one knows why. That's, That's it? just the end. Just <gasps> And I like to think that it's the ghosts just wandering about maybe... Maybe it's if hot. there's an employee or something, like maybe the maid going through and doing her daily business, opening, closing, airing out rooms or something. Oh, I don't know. That's so strange. It's very interesting. I don't even know what to make of that. And the fact that she like brought her coworkers in on it too and they were all keeping track. Yeah. Because if it's just one person, I'd be like, okay, you made that up. No, but they, it was like the whole bank was all the basically bank like, oh, look, the window on the eighth floor is now open i like that yeah that's cute i don't even know what to make of that though very strange strange things mm -hmm. there's another room in the baker that has some strange to say the least occurrences the room called the brazos club previously a dining and ballroom has had many orbs captured in photos and videos during investigations video equipment has shut off for no apparent reason while recording in there lights go on and off on their own and some claim to smell the scent of chocolate while standing in the room. And some people believe that Bonnie and Clyde might still haunt this room as well. I don't oh know why, gosh. but that's just the, the rumor. That's just the I thing that's said. Love that. Why chocolate? It was a dining hall. Oh. And a ballroom. So like desserts and chocolate stuff walking things. through. Yeah. One of the strangest encounters happened to a tour group full of World War II veterans and their spouses. They were walking through the hotel chatting with the tour guide when they entered the Brazos Club room. It was completely empty, save for them. And one of the wives of the group stopped walking and looked around the room confused. She turned to her husband in a whispered tone and asked him if he could hear it too. The whole group stood in silence and they all heard the sounds of distant music, dishes clanking <gasps> together, and mumbled conversations as if they had just walked into an open restaurant. This isn't something reported often by visitors, but for an entire group of people to experience the same things definitely makes you wonder. That's crazy, but now if I think about like, my little like different dimension theory, Imagine you're like at a dinner party and you just see a group of old people just like, and it's like a bunch of ghosts to you because yeah. you're in your world. And you just like spit your food. And you're like, just like, oh my God, do y'all see, see that? that group of old people over there? Yeah. That's what I was going to say is like the, the same theory about the like time slip or yeah. momentary thing overlapping. That's crazy. That's very weird. I, that, I really like that story. This is going to mess with me now. Now that I've unlocked that part of my brain and that's a thought. <laughs> This is really going to mess with my outlook on every, everything. Every time you have any kind of strange thing happen, you're like, what if it was another dimension? Yeah. I also think that maybe like it could be a momentary residual haunting mm -hmm. kind of feeding off since it was a large group of people. Just yeah. Kind of like their energy kind the of party fed vibe. into it that it just made I can see that more clear. Every time I think of like a like overlapping timelines or anything like that, I think of an episode of Charmed where <laughs> sorry where, we're back where phoebe goes back in time with cole i think is the guy's name he's like a demon or whatever. yeah and they kind of loop through this yeah part of time where a party and like a fire or something I, yep i think of that all the time <sighs> what a good show charm left a lasting impact on my life <laughs> me too and i love the name phoebe me too. There is yet another spirit that haunts the Baker Hotel, supposedly, that has an interesting backstory. One medium who visited the hotel made contact with a young boy who said he was six years old, who came to Mineral Wells in 1933 looking for a cure for his illness. I think Aww. she said it might have been leukemia. Oh, and no. In the special waters that everybody raved about. He didn't make it through his trip, 
and remained at the hotel and was seen in the company of a shaggy dog. And if you ever hear or see a ball bounce or roll towards you from nowhere, maybe it's the little boy wanting to play or whatever is claiming to be the spirit of a young child. Stop it right there. <laughs> You're going to stop right there because I believe that is that little boy and I would like to just be sad. I don't want to be frightened. It is that little boy and his dog and that makes me want to cry. Okay, I'm sorry. For the sake of the pod. Whatever's pretending to be. How dare you? For the sake of the pod, it's a, it's a child. Thank you. Oh, but that's really sad. That is very sad. But I mean, it happened because it was such a, a place known for healing. Yeah. So many people flocked there when they had incurable diseases or ailments. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, well, we hear good things here. Let's pack up and, and head there and see if the waters can cure us. And many people did not make it. So no, it's really heartbreaking. One, another reason why mineral wells could be haunted. So haunted. Also, just water in general, uh -huh. like we talked about. I wonder if special properties in water, like special minerals, like like these I was could have that. some kind of energy yeah energy producing thing like i was gonna say about. that yeah we need to take some know. of that water and do like that experiment that that guy did like with the crystals of it we need to oh, freeze it yeah. and see what it looks like i love you dog yeah <laughs> that's what i think of when i think of that experiment me too very strange if you really think about how they conducted that experiment yeah imagine someone well, walks in and you're like sorry i'm working and you're just sitting there going good water lovingly love speaking you. to your You're water so great yeah He's scolding it just <laughs> even worse <laughs> one of the only hauntings with an actual backstory that can be proven by historic records and new newspapers occurs in of all places the basement Ugh. and it's pretty horrible so oh. in january of 1948 a young bellhop douglas moore who was only 16 years old was getting ready for his shift to begin and playing around with a friend and employee of the baker hotel it's not known exactly the circumstance but douglas was jumping onto a moving service elevator and didn't make it all the way inside. His body was caught between the top of the wall and the bottom of the elevator as he waited for over half an hour before he could be rescued and taken to the hospital. By that time, it was too late, and young Douglas succumbed to his injuries at the hospital. That was so much worse than I thought it could even be. And that this is proven. So, it, like, I read the newspaper. It was real. Clipping, <sighs> yeah. Very sad. Douglas's spirit is spotted in the basement, particularly near the elevators at night. Some people claim to have only seen the upper half of his body waiting <gasps> in the elevator. I... I don't know. That's just what some people say. But legend claims that if you call out his name while down in the basement, you will feel a rush of cold air pass by you as if his spirit is coming to your call. Oh, no. Very frightening. Just being in the basement in general. I was about to say basements, period. Yeah. But he was 16. He was only 16. Yeah. Very, that very hurts. sad. Very that tragic. You always bring me down. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I, we're not really going up from here. Great. So. <laughs> Perfect. There, but we are done with the Baker Hotel. There's an air of mystery and unease, especially for those more sensitive who enter the Baker Hotel, and particularly at night. Even if you don't encounter any of the sounds or smells that accompany the hauntings of this piece of history, you're bound to feel like something is off. Yes. Just there's there's that vibe about the it. Energy. That feeling you get when the hair on the back of your neck stands up and you can't just and you can just sense that you're being watched, you know? Yeah. It, it just might be worth a visit once it uh, is reopened in a couple of years. Oh, yeah. I would love to go. I already told mom we're going. So. Yeah. And she's down. As I said, I couldn't finish off this episode without mentioning another extremely haunted location in Mineral Wells. In fact, it is not even a block away from the Baker Hotel. Literally. Like, you can walk out of the Baker Hotel and see the house. Huh. The Haunted Hill House has been a part of the community even before the Baker and is possibly one of the most haunted houses in all of Texas. Oh. I feel like I say that all the time. You do. Like the most haunted house in <laughs> Illinois. Yeah. Just, but this one, this, one's, is. this one's freaky. So this house, originally referred to as the Kyle House, was built in 1890 by C.F. Yeager on top of a small hill along the road in the middle of town. It has a great view of East Mountain right behind the home, which, by the way, is rumored to be the location where outlaw Sam Bass buried his gold. There's like a Ooh. cave somewhere <laughs> hidden under East Mountain. I, I would know. love for someone to find like something like that. I would love to be the person to find well, some yes, buried treasure. Me too. But I couldn't say that because I'm not going out and digging and anywhere. Yeah. yeah. So I would love for someone to find that. Yeah. Just, just the story. Yes. Me too. The house was occupied by Miss Fanny Yeager Kyle and her sister until the 1920s. Fanny Kyle was straight laced and felt it very important to keep the community nice and well cared for. She was just a nice old lady. Fanny. Who didn't take any, any heat from yeah. anybody. She would often invite people to stay in their home and aid them with their ailments with the famous mineral water with its own well in the back. So Ooh. they had 
their own will. Where the real story behind this home begins is after Miss Kyle passed away and the prohibition was in full effect. It was at this point when the house was rumored to have begun operating as a brothel and speakeasy for patrons of the Baker Hotel. Whoa. The home was an inconspicuous place for guests to visit within walking distance of the popular resort destination to partake in more unsavory side of tourism. There are stories of hidden rooms and compartments in the home that allowed easy storage for bootleggers to store liquor and secretly transport it down out of the house to be delivered by young boys on bikes to places like the Baker Hotel during the Prohibition in the 20s and early 30s. So I saw one video where they showed kind of like this little hole mm -hmm. that you could stick things in and kind of shimmy it down to the first floor. And she, the owner of the home, was talking about how young boys just ate nine, 10, 11 year old boys would come and like pick up their loot and ride their bikes down to the Baker Hotel and drop it off. Cause no one, I mean, the cops aren't gonna stop like, you sir, do you have alcohol on you? That's horrible, but why is that kind of cute to me? They were getting money, that's man. That's terrible, that's really terrible. Times are tough. Kind of, wow. Of course, all of this activity being illegal makes keeping records out of the question for those operating Hill House at the time. With no records, the documentation of all the reported crimes, including murders and alleged suicides, is essentially non-existent. So there are said to have been murders within the house. Yeah. That makes not. sense for a kind of a seedy place anyway. Mm -hmm. But nothing is kept. Like, well, even yes. if someone were to pass away in the house, I think they'd probably take them down the road and... Say really... they passed there, yes. not in the house. Yes. Because they don't want an investigation. No eyes on the house. Yes. yes. The stories and lore persist. On top of all of the abuse, crime, and traumatic events occurring in the home's early days, there was also an interesting report about a previous owner of the home. It seems that one of the owners practiced dark magic performing rituals that summoned and even bound a demon to the home and land. Along with the demon stalking the halls of the home, there are supposedly eight or nine other spirits regularly communicated with by paranormal investigators who travel from all over to experience the unexplainable things that occur in this home. This home is creepy. I got, just from videos, obviously, I haven't been there, but I just from videos and the way people talk about it, I got really kind of creepy feelings about it. The current owners of the home, Kathy and Sunny Estes, bought the house in 2017 and almost immediately opened it up for paranormal investigations because they themselves, they opened it, they weren't like super big in the paranormal, but they knew what they were kind of taking on. Yeah. After they experienced a few things, they were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Come on in. This, is, this isn't our full-time home anymore. This is the home for people to explore. Wow. The home took away all of their skepticism of paranormal activity in the spirit realm after spending just a few nights in the home. Like they were just like, definitely not. Everything is true now. That's because crazy. of the strange that things. That fast though? That fast. You can stay the night in the home if you really want to, but they say about 50% of the people who come to investigate make it through the morning. And these are like seasoned paranormal investigators. These it's are not people- just freaks from the street. It's not just us yeah. who <laughs> never truly us. experienced something crazy. Yeah, it's like actual who do this for as much as they can for a living. I don't like going that. Going in there and don't even stay the full night. They just leave halfway through i don't think i would ever even want to go even in the day i don't know that i would either no not after we'll, we'll okay get tell it, me but, why but yeah this is one that i'm like on the fence and leaning more towards i'll just pass by it in my car and wave yeah kathy believes that some of the spirits are harmless and just seeking attention and recognition to help them or even just notice them but there are spirits in the hill house that she and many others believe are evil angry from a traumatic life or death and looking to inflict their pain and misery onto <gasps> others my god these spirits don't like visitors and will do anything to get you out of their home. Same. <laughs> yeah, it's relatable, honestly. Many of the investigators that take the time to explore the home have some intense interactions with the spirits that still call the Hill House their home. Upon entering, people will report feeling nauseous and sick immediately. They'll get headaches, they'll get sick to their stomach, just entering just the door. Walking in. EVPs are often picked up by people exploring the hauntings. Sometimes innocuous phrases or whispering are caught on the uh, audio recordings. Other times it's something more ominous, like save us or <gasps> get out you know the typical save us save us that one, has been heard a i couple times. hate that the get out one like okay okay right. <laughs> save, save us mm -hmm. that scares me even more that makes me really sick even worse deep guttural growlings i just gag that's gag worthy that's horrendous the growling is even often heard out loud and not just later when reviewing footage captured on the investigation. So you know a lot of EVPs, you only kind of hear hear it underneath yeah. other people's talkings. These people hear out loud in their ears. There, I, I saw a few videos that, because they have a, a social media page for their, it's basically a business at this point. And there are some videos of people sitting in one of the main rooms that's like said to be bad hauntings. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear kind of a noise but suddenly everyone's screaming and running out of the room. 
I don't like that. It's scary. I really don't like it's that. It's scary. The owners and many visitors will hear hurried whispers and voices coming from upstairs and even the sounds of pacing or scurrying feet moving around above them when they know that nobody else is in the home. Scurrying? Yes. That's enough. Guests have experienced beds shaking and one was even pulled from the edge of the bed at night. She was kind of taunting the spirit though, like, oh, we hear you're in here. You know, you know what they do. That's and what she you just get. got yanked from her bed. That is sick. And that is sick. They have cameras set up in all the rooms so they can kind of capture all this. They have that on camera. I didn't see it, but they were talking about it. I didn't have time to go look for it. I don't want to see it. People will often experience cold spots moving around them while exploring the home, and many orbs and mists have also been captured here as well. Mm -hmm. There are a few particular rooms that are notorious or more so infamous. For the experiences people have had within. One of those rooms is what Kathy, one of the owners, calls the scratcher room. It's a small room set up with a poker table and several little historical or paranormal adjacent knickknacks throughout. But over 60 people have been scratched, <laughs> some to the point of bleeding while sitting in this room. Ew. Deep lacerations in their skin. The spirit that Kathy believes inhabits this room was the owner of the home after Fanny Kyle, the man who set up operations of bootlegging and the brothel. Oh, he so was he was dark side. Supposedly an angry man and sometimes even violent. I mean, that's kind of typical or stereotypical, I guess, for people who run that kind of business. Yeah. He didn't treat the women in his employee very well at all and may have even been a murderer. There's another spirit on the stairs that they've captured in photos that they believe to have been a working girl back when the home was a brothel. Mm. She's often seen wearing a light blue dress and just walks up and down the stairs. They've got pictures of her before. That makes me sad. Up on the second floor, there seems to be a ghost of a child named Joshua who is born in the home. <gasps> he was a child of one of the women who worked in the house and is believed that he also died in the home at a young age. <sighs> He remains upstairs, sometimes moving toys around for guests and investigators to play with. So Kathy doesn't spend very much time upstairs if she can help it, because this is where the more insidious spirits reside. She literally doesn't go upstairs. She'll do tours of the downstairs and see, say, oh, okay, my husband will take you upstairs because Ooh. I just don't go up there anymore. Good for her. There's one dark entity that they call Toby because of one of the recordings they have gotten where it sounds as if the demon is growling and screaming the name in a dark, grovelly voice. I knew I was going to get you a laugh with Toby because that's just such a like weird name. But apparently they they caught on video or on audio like them. It's screaming like in this really deep voice like Toby. Like just really creepy. I don't know. I don't think that's his name. I feel like that's someone he hates. Possibly. Like, uh, you need to watch curse the you. I know. But anyway, yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's a demon. Why supposedly. would you just say your name? Okay. What if they were asking its name? Oh, okay. Okay, that's possible. he's Toby. We'll go with that. They call him Toby and they have a sign like this is Toby's room on, in the <sighs> room that he That just gave stalks. me a chill. One of the couple's first experiences occurred upstairs in the room with some of the darkest energy. So Toby's room. While sleeping in bed soon after they had purchased the home, Sonny was woken up very suddenly by the sounds of giggling in his ear. He thought he must have been dreaming until the door at the end of their bed unlatched by itself. At this point, Kathy was also awake and from the darkness of the adjoining room, the couple could see the head of a shadowy figure peeking out at them with shining eyes. The two left the room and sat out on the porch trying to get some fresh air and calm themselves down to return to bed. That is until the front door began to rattle from the force of knocking, banging by unseen fists. They ran inside to get the guests that they had staying with them um, up and out of the home immediately because they're like, we've got to go. And they knew something wasn't right. That's the first time that the two of them smelled the overwhelming scent of what they described to be burning soot. Just ash what? and burning smell. They and several other people who have visited the home have encountered the smell again, and the owners of the home associate that smell with the dark entity that they believe is bound to the house. Oh my god. They had people staying with them? Yeah, like a, it was like a friend or someone interested in paranormal or something, yeah. The Estes were told by the daughter of a previous owner of the home that her mother used to practice dark magic, like we said, inside the house. And often upstairs in one of the bedrooms. So she said the mother would send them downstairs and like, don't come up here. I'm, I'm busy, basically. And would do her rituals and summonings and stuff. Oh, my God. It is here where the couple believes that the demon was summoned and binding magic was used to keep the demon there. So I don't know if maybe she summoned the demon looking for answers or help or, or whatever people do who practice dark magic. She realized she had gotten bitten off a little more than she could chew and bound him there so he couldn't wreak havoc on her family or yeah. the rest of the world i don't know i don't know why that just made my stomach hurt it's sickening yeah that, one of the reasons why i don't think i'll go here no there are a plethora of peculiar encounters and pieces of lore and history about the home including a shadow man that is often seen lurking outside in the backyard and in and around a camper that they have set up back there so there's like just this cute little camper that they have mm -hmm. and he's always seen kind of darting the trees behind uh, the camper uh. even sometimes inside of the camper no. 
But one of the most ominous things that I read in my research of this house was about the well that was sealed up many years ago that still exists out back. Oftentimes, REM pods will light up and go crazy while doing investigations near the well. One AVP that Kathy talks about out near the well was captured years ago saying, Mommy, come help me. Come find me. Shut your mouth. I literally just felt my stomach like dip down to my feet and then come back up like it wanted to come out of my nose. That shook me to my core. All I can think of, demon. Oh, Telling yeah. them to come find them. <gasps> yeah. No, thank you. No, thanks. I'm scared. I'm so scared because I've been afraid of the ring oh my since birth. God. Maybe okay. that's what I've been thinking about because I just pictured this darkness around it. And I was like, why am I so afraid of these wells? And the <laughs> ring like, imprinted on my mind. Yeah. Okay. That was like, you remember we watched the ring for the first time and immediately after the credits start rolling, we get a phone call. Yep. <laughs> it was the middle of the night. And we were all like, ah! Even mom was afraid to answer. And she did. And it was just her brother, right? Yeah, it was. But she, we were home alone. Dad wasn't home. It was just us three kids and our mom. I do remember because then after that, we played Sonic because we were all like oh, on yeah. edge. I do remember that. We had to find something to lighten the mood. Oh my gosh. Well, anyway, investigations within the home are taken very seriously by Kathy and Sunny. And they do all that they can to keep people from faking any kind of experiences within the home. So they don't they don't take too kindly to people trying to come in and, and make things, fake things for TikTok or YouTube or anything. Yeah, just good. trying to get views. They want everything to be as legitimate as possible. They have cameras, like I said, set up in almost every room to capture activity and try to be as objective as they can to make sure that they rule out any other possibility for the encounters that they and their guests claim to have had. I like that. Even if you escape the haunted hill house unscathed without a paranormal encounter or a scratch on your body, don't hold your breath. Mm -hmm. There are some visitors who come to the home that will leave and be visited by some sort of malevolent mm -hmm. spirit or creature the following day. Nope. They come in, investigate, they're like, oh, well, this wasn't that bad, and leave, and I don't know if it's in dreams or awake or, or what, but some malevolent darkness will come and visit them afterwards. You know, I wasn't considering that as being a possibility. I didn't either. And I sh she said that I was like, please God, why? I guess you will be taking all of these field trips by yourself because <laughs> there's no way. No, I don't know why I thought like, oh, if it's bad, it'll just stay there. I don't know if it wants to get go me to the really dark places anyway. <sighs> Like this, I, I don't think I'll go. Mm -mm. I don't think I'll, I'll enter I wouldn't even want to walk past. Because also, many people seem to get addicted to the house. Kathy claims that many of their visitors will have dreams about the home over and over again and feel a strong urge to return, like something is pulling them there. Nope, and I have mentioned it a million times. My dreams are just too much. My chest feels heavy. <laughs> so, long story long, Mineral Wells has some spooky things going down. Pretty haunted place. I'm into it. I'm going to the baker. The baker sounds. The baker sounds cool. Sounds nice. Haunted Hill House can absolutely stay there and be haunted on its own because exactly. I will not be gracing my presence or making my presence known within. No, I'm sick. I don't know why, but the well that just like punched me in my soul. So I started doing research on the Baker Hotel because, like I said, Chelsea told me about it, and I was like, "Wow, that sounds interesting." It was really great. I was like, "Wow, this is this is awesome." And then I kept coming across the Haunted Hill House. I was like. That sounds interesting too. And I was just looking into it on my own because uh -huh. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm intrigued by this place. And I started reading on it. I was like, oh, no, no. I have to bring this to you. It might just be because I haven't eaten today, but I feel so <laughs> sick right now. Well, let's go eat our food. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is where we leave you. Sick like Natalie is, maybe. Yeah. We appreciate you taking the time to watch or listen wherever you are. The best way to support us is to subscribe wherever you're watching or listening. Follow us. Like and leave a comment for the algorithm. Do all the things. Leave us a five-star review if you're on podcast, please. And even better, share us with your spooky friends. If you know people who enjoy this kind of content and you enjoy this kind of content that we're putting out, let it let your friends know and, and share us around. Also, if you have a creepy story of your own, if you've ever been to Mineral Wells, especially, we'd like to know. You can send us an email at ghostiespod at gmail.com. We would love to read your stories. Yes. Yes, we would. We will see you next Monday. Goodbye. Goodbye.